you know what, I think it's high time we watch some more Lost Tapes again. I already checked out the three Bigfoot episodes, so tonight let's watch the two werewolf ones. Season 2 episode 4 simply titled Werewolf, and season 3 episode 9, The Beast of Bray Road. Lost Tapes Werewolf Let's start with Werewolf, which opens up in 1700s France, where we learn of a terrible beast that killed dozens of victims. Later on, this creature would be known as the Beast of Galvedon. But could this werewolf still exist today? Well, according to Lost Tapes, absolutely. I think you remember the format of this show. You get a little bit of found footage story, then the experts chime in. It's a lot like a documentary. For the story part of this one, you have Austin Pace, a filmmaker wanting to tag along with the police to investigate a string of mysterious murders happening around the city. All the victims have been torn to shreds with deep gashes made by claws and teeth, giving him the nickname the Beast Killer Murderer. Real original, guys. Well, we don't they show up at a bar, which is the common denominator for all the victims. They were all here first, then killed elsewhere. And they think they might have found their guy. A bit of a loner, sitting with a girl out of his league. And the biggest red flag, he has a criminal past of assault. I think that's our guy. Now we see the experts talk about how real-life wolves hunt, waiting for their prey to run so they can chase it. They describe what a werewolf would look like, which honestly is nothing new, a huge beast, long hair, sharp claws, and teeth. You know the drill. Inside the bar, we see some truly terrible acting. But eventually the two leave for the night, and the police jump into action, tailing them. Once they get to the guy's house, he quickly closes the blinds, and they lose visual. Just lost visual. We hear a scream from inside the house, and they break down the door to get in. Now the experts chime in about the moon, and how there's a theory called the lunar effect theory that says a human's behavior can be affected by a full moon, but really nothing's 100% proven. Back inside the house, everyone wanders around for a bit while looking for the girl, and after a while, they do find her safe and sound in the basement, hiding out. So I guess she's okay. But first, we have to learn about hypertrichosis, a condition that causes hair to grow all over the body. People with this condition were exploited in sideshows and circuses around the world. And back then, they even believed that people with this condition were a different species. Let's get back to our story with the grand finale. There's no sense in even hiding it now. You know that this isn't a human doing the killings, but a werewolf. But maybe it's not who you're thinking it is. They find their suspect, dead, torn up like all the others. That's right, he wasn't a monster, she is! And everyone comes rushing down, just in time to see her transform. But us the audience aren't privy to seeing this. Instead, the camera goes crazy, we see flashes of something, but in the end, there's no transformation scene. What a letdown. They tell us that the girl escaped, she killed Austin, and the two detectives quit the police force. Now, on to Season 3, Episode 9, The Beast of Bray Road, which is basically a werewolf that terrorized people on Bray Road in Wisconsin. It opens up with a guy on a surveillance camera and something is in the bushes behind him. It emerges and attacks, but we can't see it because this guy's big butt's in the way. Hey, just move over a little bit. I want to see what this thing looks like. We learn about a militia that's been formed out here in the woods. A bunch of, for lack of a better term, crazy gun nuts who think the government has too much control. And, well, I mean, they're not wrong, but taken to the extreme. They want their little group to have some publicity, so they've asked Randall Steiner and Mike Monroe to come out and report on their group and spread the word. 
But everything's real hush-hush, blindfolding them so they don't know where the base is. While they get there, we learn a little bit about the beast of Bray Road, from none other than Linda S. Godfrey, the expert in the field. She literally wrote the book on the creature. She goes on to explain that it's about six foot tall with a wolf's head and a human torso. Most people would see it on four legs at first, but then it would stand up on two and chase after you. Back to the militia who start talking to the interviewers. Their first question is, what's the deal with all the cameras? And they tell them that just days ago, one of their men was attacked by the feds, torn to shreds. But we know this wasn't a human that did this. The guys are hoping to catch someone on tape so they can prove that the government isn't obeying their laws. The experts do talk about wolves for a little bit again, this time going into more detail about their teeth and how their whole mouth is designed to be a killing machine, ripping and tearing, crushing. If a human were to fight a wolf in attack mode, that human would have a pretty bad time. During the interview, they get interrupted by an attack. Of course, everyone thinks it's a raid. They hear gunshots and they head to the location. We do see a pretty cool shot of a girl walking around, and she doesn't see the giant wolf walking behind her. I like that. It's real creepy. The beast attacks, killing a few more people, and no one really knows what's going on. Eventually, the cameraman's had enough, and he decides to just nope out of there, running to the car. But once he gets there, he can't find the keys. Eventually, the glass breaks, and he's attacked. But it's not the beast, it's the militia leader, who uses the poor guy as a human shield. They eventually make it back to the base, only to see that one of the reporters is on his phone calling for help. A big no-no with the leader, who picks him up and holds him at gunpoint. He still thinks this is a government raid, but soon he learns the truth. There's a bigger fish to fry here, and the beast of Bray Road attacks. They fire at it, but the only survivor ends up being the cameraman. Good for him after everything he's been through. And that was the two werewolf episodes of Lost Tapes. And what'd you think? Personally, I'm still on the fence. It didn't really tell me anything new. They were just like, yeah, you know what a werewolf looks like. Don't mess with them because they'll tear you to shreds. The first episode was really just people walking around a house looking for someone and not much else. In both stories, they touch on real life wolves, and in the first one, at least they mentioned the moon with the lunar effect theory. But what about the difference between a werewolf, dogman, and wolfman? That's something I would actually like to know, or maybe even have some eyewitness accounts on there. I do appreciate the experts, especially Linda S. Godfrey, so let them talk more about their theories. But I, I do get it. You only have 18 minutes to tell a story and explain a cryptid, so things have to move pretty fast. I did enjoy the stories, and the twist in the first one of having the girl be the monster was pretty cool. And in The Beast of Bray Road, when he was walking silently behind the girl in the bushes, that was a cool shot. But you didn't get to see a transformation scene in either, and that was pretty disappointing. I do think there's a place for the werewolf episodes of Lost Tapes. In fact, I think it's a good show to have on during a Halloween party, or something to show older kids to spook them out a little bit. But chances are you aren't going to learn anything new here, and in the end, I don't think you'll be convinced werewolves are real. I give it two and a half full moons out of four. Are the savage beasts we fear merely reflections of our primal selves, or do they live among us?